Hello and welcome to another DIY engineers video. In this video I'll be going over LiDAR and how to use it with Arduino. We'll be basing the video on the use of the Benawake TF Luna LiDAR sensor. In the video we'll be going over the basics of the sensor, a few basics on LiDAR, how to connect to an Arduino Uno, as well as how to connect to a Node MCU. Of course we'll be going over how to program with Arduino including details on which library to use and how to download it. Finally we'll be running a test using our LiDAR sensor and we'll show you the test we're doing and show you the results at the same time so you can make sense of it. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the LiDAR sensor already connected to the Arduino Uno. We can see here's where the light or laser is emitted from. Here we have the circuit board that comes with it. It's all embedded in one part. Here's where we connect the cables. And here we have two holes that can be used to attach to some other component that you might have, like a 3D printed part to, to hold your laser. So, it's pretty lightweight, so I like it a lot. So here's the LiDAR sensor I just showed you. Now you might be wondering what does LiDAR even stand for? LiDAR is light detection and ranging, and it's used to measure distance. It uses the time of flight constant, which basically uses the time it takes for a light signal to travel to then determine the distance to an object, based on the fact that we already know the speed of light. The light signal will be emitted from the sensor and will return by traveling twice the distance between the sensor and the object, so it goes from the sensor to the object and then back to the sensor. And then since we know the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, we can use these two to calculate the distance to the object. Here we have six pins that come from the bottom of the sensor. Pin number one, which goes, the number one is the left and six, the one on the right, so it goes from left to right. Number one is your five volt power supply. You can actually range uh, from a range of voltages, but five volts is the pretty standard. You can actually put anything between 3.7 and 5.2. Pin number two will be your RXD, SDA, basically you're receiving and data pin, then you have TXD and SEL for your clock or transmitting. Number four will be ground, and number five will be a configuration input. Basically, if you ground it, you will be running your sensor in I2C mode. If you have it disconnected or 3.3 volts, it will be in serial mode. In this example that I'm going to show you next, I'll be using it on I2C mode. Then we have pin number six, <clears throat> which is a multiplexing input, sorry, output. And it's either an on off mode for output or I2C mode. This pin, I'll have it unplugged on the example I'll be showing you. So, now a little bit more about the sensor. It can measure anywhere between 0 0.2 meters to 8 meters or 7.8 inches all the way to 26 feet and has a resolution of 1 centimeter or 0 0.4 inches. The sensor accuracy is 6 centimeters when measuring less than 3 meters or less than 9.8 feet and 2% when measuring between 3 and 8 meters so between 9.8 feet and 26 feet meaning that when measuring 8 meters the accuracy will be 16 centimeters or 6.3 inches so now this is what I was mentioning earlier let's say I'm using a lighter sensor in a car to measure the distance to the car in front of me I know that the distance traveled by the light which is from the sensor to the object and then back is 2 times d d being the distance I want to measure and t being the time it takes to travel distance divided by time will be your speed in this case the speed of light time being the time it took for that specific interval that I'm measuring so if we already arrange this we get that d equals ct divided by 2 so this is essentially in concept just for so you can better understanding is the equation that defines the distance measured by our sensor so now Based on the pins that I showed you earlier, this is how we configure uh, our connections between the TF Luna sensor that we've been going over and Arduino Uno. So again, we ground pins 4 and 5. We put 5 volts on the first one. And then the other two, since again I'm grounding the one for the mode and I'm putting an I2C mode, I'm going to connect your pins 2 and 3 to the relevant I2C pins on your Arduino Uno. And then the same applies if you want to use a node MCU, just different pins for your I2C mode. Now we're going to go ahead and test the code 
for this example using the TF Luna LiDAR sensor. So to do that, go ahead and go to DIYEngineers.com, specifically follow the link in the description to this video, and you will find a section that says Arduino code. Copy this code and paste it in your Arduino IDE. Note that to do that, you will have to have the right libraries. You should have already the wire in the Arduino, but make sure to also go ahead and download the TF Luna I2C library, as I'm going to show you next. Now, the first step, once we get to the Arduino IDE, is to go to Sketch. And let's go to include library and manage library. Once that everything loads up, you want to type TFL I2C and install the one shown here. I cannot install it since I already have it installed, but this is the one you need. Let's go ahead and click install. Now in this code, we basically include our required libraries. We initialize TF Luna I2C. We initialize the variables for the distance that we're going to be using and also the default I2C address. We initialize the serial port that we'll be using and we begin wire under the setup. And then we go into the main loop where we basically start taking our measurements. And if we get data, we want to print it into the serial monitor. So that's what this if statement is about. And then we'll have a minute delay and it will then keep iterating so go ahead and click the upload button once you have set up the proper communication port for your arduino device and click run and then you'll start getting readings on your serial monitor so now let's go ahead and do that so here we're testing at five feet from the object being measured so you can see on the roughly 60.2 inches. So next we'll test at four feet from the object being measured or equivalent to 48 inches. We're getting somewhere around 48 inches, 47.6. We had a 48.4 or so before, so now we'll do two feet right now we're getting 24.2 now we're getting 23.2 this is equivalent to roughly 60 or 59 centimeters this concludes this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one bye